Now the view the view today I think is pretty widespread that um, and because I, I want to touch on this point about about atheism not so much about Darwin himself but what about the theory where does it intersect with with uh, atheism if at all and because um, the view today is pretty widespread that Darwin was doing pure science and and you know his views are here and there later on twisted for others by evil ends and I'm wondering if that is that is your view also. Um, or, or you know, are atheists abusing Darwin's theory when they say Darwinism supports their atheist belief? Well, it, it gets complicated because historically, the theory of evolution goes back to ancient Greece, about three centuries uh, before the birth of Christ, uh, to Epicurus, who did set forth a theory of evolution uh, th that really sounds amazingly Darwinian, uh, and for a reason, and that was which picked is up. touched on in your in your book, Moral Darwinism. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, and uh, became even more widespread through a disciple of his, the Roman philosopher Lucretius, who wrote his uh, his uh, great uh, um, Epicurean um, evolutionist poem uh, about 50 years before the birth of Christ, and that found its way into European culture. And in fact, uh, Darwin's own grandfather, Erasmus Darwin, was was pretty much like a modern reincarnation of the ancient uh, Roman Epicurean philosopher Lucretius, writing these, you know, the the, the turgid uh, poetry that had an evolutionary intent. Uh, so, so that was part of the European intellectual tradition before it ever had any kind of grounding in science. Evolution, it wasn't called evolution yet, uh, but, but we'll just call it evolution, uh, was firmly entrenched among the radicals uh, at least 150 years before Darwin was born. And it was in his own family in that atheistic form. Uh, uh, you know, two generations uh, before Darwin was born. Now, in Europe, in the beginning of the eight, the first half of the 1800s, there were many uh, people, uh, competent scientists, uh, who saw the progressive nature of the fossil record and and understood it to be stretching back millions of years mm -hmm. as a sign that there was a kind of directed development as the earth itself developed really a kind of anthropic account mm -hmm. of how life came about you know it's amazingly anthropic uh you know so so that the stages of animal development uh, follow the stages of uh, the geological development and the conditions of the earth so you have a, 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 a kind of privileged planted argument. I, I want to say that uh, 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 <laughs> because I think that's exactly true. And Darwin's own mentor, Adam Sedgwick, had uh, in geology, uh, had something of this view. Now, at the time of the Darwin uh, uh, and, uh, sets forth the origin of species in mid 1800s, there were many other evolutionary accounts out there. Some of them were atheistic, some of them were theistic. Yes. But what's again most important is that people like is you know Asa Gray, Charles Lyell, Alfred Russell Wallace, and Saint George Mavart were setting forth well argued theistic accounts uh, of evolution, uh, which saw Darwin's account of natural selection as woefully inadequate, as creating all kinds of problems and scientifically flawed. So it opens up a new vista for us. We can say, wait a second, this isn't evolution, you know, it's got to be uh, scientific atheism versus foolish religion. Mm. It isn't that way at all. Uh, in fact, that's the Darwin myth. It's, it's a distortion of, uh, of the history of science, but it's one that we're still suffering under. <laughs> Right. And where does where does social Darwinism fit into this? Because we usually hear that uh, Darwin was doing science, but then some people came along in the, in the decades following that in the late 19th century and sort of perverted his teaching uh, on biology and by applying it to all these other areas. What's what's your take on social Darwinism? Yeah, that's an important point because obviously social Darwinism, which leads right into the eugenic movements and the notion that the poor should be crushed, the unfit should be cast out and eliminated, and it doesn't just lead to Hitler, it leads to all kinds of other things. Well, of course, people who affirm Darwin want to distance themselves today from that, and so the false notion developed 
that Darwin just set forth a theory of biology and social Darwinism is an aberration. Well, this is one. This is an awful lie. <laughs> it's I, I want to say myth, but it's so bad it's a lie. And all you need to do to see that it's a lie is you go back and read Charles Darwin's own Descent of Man. And in uh, the Darwin myth, I show how early Darwin came to the notions that, that he brought about in the, in the Descent of Man. And in the Descent of Man, you read the most horrifying passages uh, that that are are obviously eugenic. I mean, Darwin is the founder of modern eugenics, no matter what anyone else says, because he saw that the evolution of human beings must act in accordance with the evolution of everything else on his terms, that is, by the elimination of the unfit, by war between the closely allied species. And Darwin set forth unflinching uh, accounts of that in human evolution, where the destruction of one tribe by another tribe, one race by another race, was just the way it worked. It's the way it worked in the past. It's the way it works in the future. So one thing that I make very clear in the Darwin myth is that notion that you can distinguish Darwinism from social Darwinism is simply false. Hmm. And so, what do you uh, what do you make of these these recent treatments of, of Darwin in this uh, this year of <laughs> celebrating Darwin? Uh, I'm thinking of the Desmond and Moore book uh, on on basically saying Darwin was an abolitionist and uh, motivated by his uh, abolitionist uh, sentiments, and and there was another book comparing he himself comparing Darwin to Lincoln. And I'm wondering, uh, you know, whether you think these are uh, these are accurate portrayals or or not of, of Darwin. Well, in one sense they are, in another sense they're just desperate attempts to to erase bad odors from from Darwin's own life. Uh, here is the proper way to understand it. Darwin himself was indeed an adamant abolitionist, and in fact he's a third generation abolitionist at least. Uh, his own grandfather Erasmus uh, Darwin was was uh, allied himself uh, with Wilberforce against the slave trade, and so uh, uh, you have in Darwin's own uh, family line long-standing uh, uh, horror at, at slavery. Okay, so that's true. That's true. On the other hand, Darwin's own theory affirms slavery as natural. And in fact, Will, William Wilberforce's son, the great Reverend Wilberforce that everyone makes fun of and the debate about with Huxley, warned Darwin uh, explicitly that when you argue the way that you argue, human slavery is just a, as natural as the slavery that occurs among ants, where large red ants enslave smaller black ants to do their bidding. You can't get around that. Uh, and Desmond and Moore try to get around that by emphasizing, you know, all the passages where you know, florid passages where Darwin strikes out against slavery, and then sort of underplay all the passages where he talks about the inferiority of certain races, and they're almost always the races who end up being slaves, uh, especially in that, you know, the the 19th century, uh, uh, um, 17th, 18th, 19th century. Uh, uh, they're just right there in Darwin. You can't get around it. And Darwin even talks about the extinction of these races in the future, uh, which is a horrifying thought, but he said it straight out. So uh, this is certain in Darwin that his own account of natural selection as determining how human beings involved completely undermines his really fine moral sentiment against slavery. There's no way to reconcile it. It's a contradiction inherent in Darwinism. It's the same one, uh, or it says the same source, as his uh, the contradiction between his humanitarian ideas and the eugenic implications of his own theory, which he himself drew out. It's just a contradiction. Hmm. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Weicker, for uh, for joining us today. I think you've whetted the appetite of our uh, our listeners and uh, the book The Darwin Myth uh, The Life and Lies of Charles Darwin is uh, available now you can find it on Amazon and, and other places uh, this is Logan Gage for the Center for Science and Culture uh, thank you for joining us today on ID the Future